The last video I made was a Cuban link necklace which was made with oval links. Today I'm going to be using round links. I just think it's a good idea just to try it out, see which one is easier. If you remember I had to bend each one individually. So let's begin with um, annealing arm metal. I have some wire already made. Uh, it's at three millimeters thick. I just want to undo my wire. It doesn't have to be perfectly straight, just straight enough to bend round into a coil. Make sure it's firmly gripped inside your vise, ready to bend round. Uh, be sure to leave the bit at the end. Uh, you don't want that cut in your finger if you're trying to bend that round. Before cutting our links, we just want to anneal it so it's nice and soft. I'm just using some beeswax on my blade so it's nice and smooth as I cut it. After cutting my links, what I've done is I've separated them in half and I'm going to close half the links and leave the other half open. So the links I've closed, I'm just going to solder. Now I've got half the links soldered, I can attach the other links that are open to the closed links. course those links have to be also closed and soldered. So once I've got my three links together I want to attach those three links to the other three links. So I've got seven links and so on till I got a chain. Project. I'm just heating it up before I put it into the acid. It doesn't have to be red hot. Now I deliberately make my chain long so I got the ends to bend round. These end links are going to get damaged. Now the first thing I do once my end link is inside the vise, I want to make sure all the solder joints are facing in one direction. I think it would be a great idea if this can be a two-man job. If you can get help with someone to actually pull the chain hard while you bend the links, it's a great idea. Now the bits that I bend and I get straight, I feed into the vise.
now you can see it's starting to take shape but it's not quite there yet so it takes a lot of patience you need to keep working at this part Now we're still quite not there yet, so I'm just going to run it through the mills. This will keep it nice and flat. Now this ain't the easiest part, this is very difficult, it takes a lot of time, a lot of practice, um, a lot of experience to get this right. And to be honest this is the second time I'm doing it. Before making this one, I made one previously and the links were slightly larger. Now you can see the problem I had. So I needed to make a tighter link. I made a sample piece made from copper. Uh, it's a good way to work you know, with. Uh, it's cheap and very effective. Once again, I've gone back to the vise and I'm trying to straighten my links out again. Uh, this is a process that I did a number of times just to get it right. Now remember I said this one is going to be round links, the last one I made was oval and to be absolutely honest with you, the oval links was easier. Even though I had trouble making them, the round links was harder to do. Did I have a hard time making it? Yes I did. But am I happy? Yes, I'm happy with the outcome. If you manage to get your links straight enough and you're ready to uh, shape it, file it down, you want to rest it on a piece of wood and melt some shellac on it to hold it in place. Out of all the process in this job, I would say that this is the most fun part, it's filing it into shape. I've done all that filing, I just go over it with some emery paper, just to smoothen it so it's ready for polishing. is polished just gently heat it up and it will come off I'm just pointing it into some nail varnish remover take that cup and I put it into another cup with boiling water Now for some reason I had some trouble taking off all the shellac, there were some stains left on there. I didn't have this problem last time, but uh, it will easily come off, just a little, little buff and it will come off. Now I'm just soldering the end link, uh, ready for my box lock.
first part I'm measuring is the thickness of my link. Uh, this will be the side of the lock. When bending our silver you want to anneal it so it's nice and soft. So I've cut the bottom part of my lock at an angle. Now I'm just going to solder the bottom part. This is the lip of the lock. Um, I'm just going to tack that on there with some laser. I'm going to solder it. So this strip I'm going to cut is going to be the tongue that goes inside the lock. Now I've made a little mark on the lip. I'm also going to cut that bit out. Now this is the only piece that I don't heat up. I just bend it round because I want that tension in the tongue. I just want to file down the sides just so it fits inside the box. I've added on the back wall, that's going to go on one side of the bracelet. black markings that you see there, they're going to be cut out and that's what's going to help it to lock. Now I soldered two end links together and then I'm going to cut out a groove in those links at the bottom so the box lock fits into the groove. Yes. 
so I'm cutting one link in half and that's going to be soldered onto one side of the lock. Now I just want to add that half link back to the rest of the bracelet. just going around the lock to make sure there's no bits sticking out so it's nice and smooth. I'm just going to add the top part of the lock push down part. I'm going to add a small piece of this silver chenille on the side of the bracelet. I've just lasered it on and I'm just going to cut off the rest of the chenille. Just going to push a wire through the hole. I'm going to bend that round to make into a figure of eight. I'm going to bend the tips together so they're touching and I'm going to solder them together. I've got a piece of wire I'm just going to melt down the end to make into a ball. Once I attach the ball onto the side of the bracelet I can pinch the wire and we've got a figure of eight. Of course you want to make sure your lock makes that clicking sound. And here's the finished product. I uh, hope you liked the video. If you haven't subscribed already please do so and thanks for watching.